turning life on its head, going nearly two months without using the bathroom, and being buried alive. Today, we are truly answering the mother of all questions. How long would you survive? Breaking down various extreme worst case scenarios and the impacts on the human body from a medical standpoint. All right, let's dive right in. Number one, pooping. A topic that is usually considered taboo to discuss in certain social circles, but I have to say it's actually a vital and natural bodily function that plays a crucial role in maintaining our overall health. All of our bodies need to do it in order to eliminate waste and toxins that accumulate in our body during digestion. When we don't expel fecal material regularly, these waste materials can build up. In extreme cases, a lack of bowel movements can result in a condition called fecal impaction, which can be painful and require medical intervention. We're talking pounds of stool backed up for days and weeks from not going to the bathroom. How long could you survive without pooping? While the survival timeline without going to the bathroom varies depending on individual factors and diet, there are some reports out there that the kick the bucket marker is somewhere around the 50 day mark without using the toilet. Let's just all agree that this number should never be put to the test. Number two, starving. Eating and being properly nourished are fundamental to our existence, serving as the fuel that sustains our bodies and minds. Our bodies need food to provide essential nutrients, energy, and support for growth and repair. When we neglect to eat or deliberately starve ourselves for extended periods of time, we deplete our bodies of these crucial elements. So insert the big scary question, how long long could you survive without food? Well, it's complicated, but the timeline without food varies depending on certain factors such as body composition and hydration, but generally it's measured in weeks rather than months, with some reports suggesting that the average person would perish after about 21 days without food. But hydration levels, aka water, are also a key factor in determining how long somebody can survive as well. Bodies reserve energy from food stores that last weeks, but dehydration can cause kidney function complications in a few days. Number three, sleeping. Have you ever seen those influencers out there who brag about, oh, I run on four hours of sleep each day and sleep is for the week, blah, blah, blah. I haven't slept in eight months. Don't listen to them. Sleep is an absolute necessity for our physical and mental well-being. Sleeping serves as a crucial time of restoration and rejuvenation for our bodies. While we sleep, essential processes like tissue repair, memory consolidation, and hormone regulation take place, to name a few. And when we consistently deprive ourselves of sleep, we disrupt these vital functions. The consequences of sleep deprivation are profound, encompassing impaired cognitive cognitive function, mood disturbances, weakened immune response, and even an increased risk of chronic health conditions like heart disease. While the exact time frame for survival without sleep varies among individuals, the longest record was 264 hours, just over 10 days, which was achieved during a scientific sleep experiment. Number four, hanging upside down. Though it may seem unconventional, can offer some benefits when done in moderation. Inverting the body occasionally in short bouts, such as through yoga poses or inversion therapy, can help improve circulation, reduce spinal pressure, and alleviate back pain. However, it's crucial to exercise caution, as hanging upside down for extended periods of time can have adverse health effects as well. For starters, extended inversion can lead to increased pressure in the eyes, potential damage to the retina, and discomfort in your head and neck. So how long would one survive inverted? 28 hours upside down. In 2009, a Utah man passed after spending 28 hours stuck upside down in a cave. Rescue workers tried to work fast, but the walls of the passage were so narrow they weren't able to get him out before he died. Number five, getting bitten by a venomous snake. I know particularly where I live and work here in Southern California, I have treated a number of patients from snake bites and rattlesnake bites specifically can cause severe consequences as their venom contains toxins that can damage tissue, disrupt blood clotting, and lead to organ failure. Proper treatment typically involves 
involves immobilizing the affected limb, keeping it at or slightly below the heart level, and avoiding the use of a tourniquet or cutting the wound. And it probably goes without saying, but snake bite survival without prompt treatment varies depending on factors like the type of snake for starters, an individual's health, the amount of venom injected, and so many other factors. So it's generally a matter of hours to days in severe cases. Number six, blowfish. Who here loves Japanese food? I know I personally love sushi and amakases. However, I do not and would not eat blowfish. It's a delicacy for some, but blowfish safety should be a crucial consideration when it comes to trying this exotic food, as it's very well known for its potential toxicity as well. Consuming poisonous pufferfish or blowfish, also known as fugu in Japanese cuisine, can put a person six feet under. You see, certain parts of the fish contain tetrodotoxin, a potent neurotoxin that can paralyze the human body's muscles and then some. And the onset of poisoning could be as soon as 10 to 45 minutes after consumption. It involves nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, followed by dizziness, tingling of the lips and extremities, paralysis, respiratory arrest, and death if not promptly addressed. Proper treatment for this puffer poisoning involves seeking immediate medical attention and inducing vomiting to remove any remaining toxins. Also keep in mind, there is no known antidote. Survival without swift treatment is not great. Number seven, buried alive. Whether exploring caves, working on construction sites, or heaven forbid, being buried alive in a coffin somehow. That's suspicious. Safety is absolutely important in these various scenarios as these extreme environments can pose grave risks to our health. In situations where individuals were to become buried, the consequences can be dire. And in the case of the extreme buried in a coffin scenarios, I think it goes without saying that this is just a terrible, terrible idea. Lack of oxygen and the potential for injury are immediate concerns in the first two scenarios of being buried. Inhaling dust or debris can also lead to respiratory distress while pressure from surrounding materials can cause serious injuries or even asphyxiation by crushing your lungs and other organs. The timeline for survival without oxygen and proper medical attention is limited, typically measured in days, minutes, or even hours. Not much time. Number eight, bleed to death. Injuries can take various forms from minor cuts and bruises to more catastrophic events, such as severe bleeding from say a car crash or gunshot wound and insert arterial bleeding. That is one of the most severe and urgent types of bleeding one can endure. It can result from a penetrating injury, blunt trauma, or damage to organs or blood vessels. Because the blood comes from the arteries, it's distinctive from other types of bleeding. When the body experiences excessive blood loss due to catastrophic injuries such as this, it can result in shock, organ failure, and even death. There are approximately, depending on the person, about 1.5 gallons or 10 units of blood in a person's body. Proper treatment involves applying pressure to the wound with a clean cloth or bandage, elevating the injured area if possible, and seeking professional medical help urgently. In all injury scenarios, if the hemorrhaging isn't stopped and the patient experiences, say, 40% blood loss, that person could bleed to death in just five minutes. And if their injuries are severe enough, this timeline could be even shorter. Hopefully, I was able to provide some medical insight on these extreme worst case survival scenarios based on some of the things I see in the emergency department. If you want me to discuss other situations like this, please let me know in the comments below. My hope for you is that you never find yourself in any of these extreme examples. But if you do, perhaps by learning about it, it will give you the best chance for healing and a positive, meaningful outcome. If you found this video helpful and educational, please check out this playlist right here with other similar videos. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and make sure you turn on your bell notifications. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.